even if you're still finishing, I know I, I just gave the numbers to some people, um, you've probably gotten far enough that we can now start to observe what's going on with this factorization thing. And why, once you know the factors of something, once you break it down, you understand that number better. I want you to look at the number of factors that you've got for the pair of numbers that you have. Have you got them all? Here's a way that you can check. For example, you can see that we've outlined 24 is a small enough number that we can pretty much nail it all in one go. Okay? You'll know you've got them all because you can see the factors come in pairs. Right? The factors come in pairs. So 1 and 24 are a pair because 1 times 24 is 24. 2 and 12 are a pair. 3 and 8, 4 and 6. Okay? So this is the one of the ways that you can check. If one of your numbers doesn't have a pair, an opposite, then I bet you have a square number, right? Because for example, if you have, who has 64? 64? Someone has 64? So 64 will have a number that is right in the middle and doesn't have a pair to go with. Namely, think about it, it's going to be 8 because 8 goes with itself. Does that make sense? But everyone else should have a list like this. Okay? Now immediately you've all noticed something if you just listen carefully to what I just said. 64. Jasmine, can you tell us the factors of 64? Have you got them there? Yeah. One, two, four, eight, 16, 24, 32, 16. Okay. Now, you remember we said everything should pair up, all your factors should pair up like this, unless you have a square number, right? Uh, in which case, the square root will be on its own, okay? Do you notice then, have a look, count up the number of factors you have for your number. Do you notice all of you have an even number of factors? Did you notice that? Unless, of course, you have a square. These are the only ones that are kind of the odd ones out. Okay, keep that in your mind. Now I actually want you to pay closer attention to the actual number of factors that you've got. So for instance, 24 has eight factors. You can see them all there. How many people have a number with that many factors? Does anyone have a number with that many factors? What do you have? 40? Someone give me another one, Damien? 56. 56. Yep, who's got another one? 66. 66. Anyone else got it? Yep. 48. And we should have one more, yeah? 54. Okay, so I'm trying to understand, just like in the periodic table, right? You've got numbers, they seem to come up at some frequency, and they have this similar property. They all seem to have eight factors. Um, I could do this process again for all the numbers which have six factors, all the numbers which have four factors, and so on. I'm trying to get at why is it that these numbers, I'm going to write them in proper order now, why is it that these numbers all have 48, 54, 56, 66, and I have 24 in that list as well. Why is it that these numbers all have eight factors? Hmm, what's going on? I asked you, the first thing, to write down the prime factorizations of these numbers. I've already got the prime factorization of 24 on the board. It's 2 cubed times 3. David, 40? Uh, I did 56. Oh, who, did, who had 40? Sorry. Yeah, Justin. Uh, 2 cubed times 5. 2 cubed times 5, 48. To the, say it again. Yeah, I think you have you have extra factors. We'll come back to this one actually. Two to the four times three, isn't it? Yeah, sixteen. We'll come back to this guy in a second and why it's different. Fifty-four. Say it again. Three cubed times two. Three cubed times two. Fifty-six. Uh, uh, two, two cubed times seven. And sixty-six. Who has it? Two times three. That's six times eleven. Is that right? Okay. Hmm. Leave forty-eight to one side for a second because it has the wrong number of factors. We'll come back to it in a minute. Twenty-four, forty, fifty-four, fifty-six, sixty-six. They all have eight factors. Hmm. A bunch of them have some significant things in common. Do you notice? What do you see, for example, if you have a look at one, two, three, four. What do you notice? Yeah. They are cubic. They're all, they all include a cube, 
and then some other number. Do you, do you notice that? So you can't have a cube by itself. You need a cube and something else. Do you, you notice that? And only how many something else's do you have? Just one. Three, five, two, seven. Hmm. Okay. So there's a pattern there. There's a pattern there. You might sort of um, conclude from that. Okay, I think everything cubed times one other number has eight factors. I wonder how you could test that out. Think about that. But then you've got this guy, which seems to break our pattern. What's going on? This guy has eight factors as well, but it's not in this format. So what's happening? Okay. The factorization is the key. The factorization is the key. 24. We've got these factors laid out like this. Because they're all written there, unlike everyone else's, I'm going to use this as my example. Okay? 2 cubed times 3. It's actually 3 to the 1. And I'm going to teach you a bit of magic. It's going to be magic for about 6 or 7 minutes until you understand how it works, and then it becomes mathematics. If I have a look at these two powers up here, 3 and 1, I'm going to increase both powers by 1, which gives me 4 and 2. What's 4 times 2? 4 times 2 is 8, which is the number of factors that 24 has. 66. What are the powers? 1 and 1 and 1. Okay, I'm going to do the same trick. I'm going to increase all the powers by 1, which gives me 2, 2, and 2, which is which is the number of factors that 66 has. Seems like magic, doesn't it? Which is why 48 doesn't have 8 factors. How many factors would you anticipate that it has? 10. Because the powers are 4 and 1, so I'm going to increase them to 5 and 2. 5 times 2 is... There are 10 factors. Now this is magic right now. What on earth is going on? Let me show you. It's about the structure. Okay. Have a look at each of these factors. Do you notice, if I wanted to, I'm not going to, I could write each of them and their prime factorization, because they're not all prime. Do you notice that? So for example, I could do the prime factorization of 12 and 8 and 6 and so on. Okay. If you do that, you reveal a structure. Can you all draw a table for me? We're going to need three columns. And Five rows. <clears throat> These factors are not randomly arranged. They're not randomly arranged at all. Each of them is a combination of the prime factors. Okay? So, for example, do you notice a bunch of the factors of 24 are even? How many of them are even? Exactly how many? Six. Two, four, six, eight, twelve, twenty-four. That's a lot of even ones, right? Why are there so many even ones? Because there are many twos in the prime factorization. Okay, look again. How many of them are multiples of three? Exactly half of them, right? Hmm. What are the ones that are multiples of three? Three is a multiple of three, and six, and twelve, and twenty-four, right? These are all multiples of three. What are all the other ones? Aren't all of the other factors, these factors, divided by three? Aren't they? Do you see there's this pattern here? How do I form this grid of numbers? Well, these are all of the ones that are multiples of 3, or I should say multiples of 3 to the power of 1, right? These are not multiples of 3. They're multiples of 3 to the power of 0. <coughs> this is a multiple of 2. These are all multiples of 2. Look at the numbers. 2 squared. These are all multiples of cubed. These guys are not multiples of 2. These are the only two ones that aren't even. Like you notice, the rest of them, the other six are even. These are multiples of 2 to the... Zero. Do you remember I said you had to take those powers, these guys up here, 
and you had to, for some reason I didn't explain, you had to add one to the powers, you had to bump them up. Do you remember that? Why did I bump them up? What was the, what was the bumping up bit? It's these guys, right? You have to include them because they contribute factors as well. Okay, and this is why it's going to be. A, this is why I didn't do sixty-six. Okay, uh, you can't do on a piece of paper that's flat anyway. You can't do a grid that's going to have all three. You actually need a cube to do that, uh, which would be two times two times two. Okay, and you still get eight, whatever those happen to be. So, rewind a little bit. My point of saying all of this is just to establish. Factorization, uh, you learn this in your normal mathematics class as just a process that you have to do. And you get quite good at it, and you guys don't usually question why you have to do it, because you're quite good at it, right? But you have to understand why are you doing this? What does factorization give you? Answer, it unlocks the structure of a number, right? Just like the periodic table unlocks the structure of an element and tells you how it works. Okay? 